Hello and welcome everyone, Benjamin Carano here, and in today's video, I'm going to be taking you along in my process of building a custom, super modern home studio desk out of plywood. This is an amazing technique that I saw in a video once of this guy who made a tiny little table, but basically you cut lots of strips of plywood and layer them out to create the width of the piece of furniture. And I've got some cool ideas, as you may have seen the finished product in the thumbnail, sneak peek, but stick around for the end of the video to see the entire uh, studio setup, and I will do a studio tour in a future video if that is requested in the comments below, so be sure to comment down below if you'd like to see a studio tour at the end of this video. But stick around first because I have to see if this design is even possible, and I've got some really cool things in mind to build the coolest piece of furniture out of plywood. All right, let's get into it. All right, so getting started here, I've basically drawn out all of the little strips that I'll need to make this initial shelving in the back for the speakers and the monitor shelf. So once I kind of had all those measurements correct, then I started calculating exactly how many of each strip I'm doing. So the base of the desk is going to be one and seven eighths inches thick. And then anything that's 1.5 inches thick is going to be the upper shelves and these little slats that will basically be holding the upper shelf on. So the base of the desk is one and seven eighths, upper shelf is 1.5 inches, and I'm basically just going to be cutting a ton and ton and ton of little strips um, that are exactly that high, and I calculated all of that out here. So I have this for basically the speaker shelf, and then here is the rest of the desk, which is just a bunch of the 72 inch, because the desk is 72 inches or six feet uh, wide, and then it's 30 inches deep. So I went shopping at Lowe's a little bit earlier today, bought some of this really nice uh, oak plywood, and I started cutting down, I just have three sheets by the way, this is three sheets of four by eight, and then I just took a board as a guide for a circular saw, and I cut all of these pieces that were eight feet, I cut them down to now six feet long. So after six feet long, I basically have a six foot long board here, the six foot by four foot. And we're gonna start running this piece through the table saw. And we're gonna be keeping, right now we're gonna be starting to cut the uh, 72 by one and seven eighths inch strips through this end of the table saw. And of course it's always useful right when it starts out to have someone to help guide you. I may be able to do this all on my own later, but today I just have my brother here, Jackson, helping me, and I'll put a little link to his channel down in the description below if any of you want to check that out. He does a lot of art and stuff. But I think this is the first time on my channel that you are meeting my brother. And yeah, quite a bit taller than me, so for <laughs> reference. All right, you ready to start cutting? Let's do it. Cool.
finally have all the pieces cut. There are probably a few hundred of these little slats and everything. So we have all of the small and medium slats for all of the dividers in the shelves at the back of the desk. We have the slightly skinnier six foot slats for the top shelf in the back of the desk. We have all of the stuff down here, which is going to be for all of the um, sort of boards to fill in the top shelf and the bottom shelf in between each one of the slats. And then, of course, we have what took the longest time to cut is all of these six foot by one and seven eighths inch long slats that will be glued together and mainly compose the base of the desk. So before I get gluing everything together, which is the next step, I'm just going to go over some of the challenges I had um, so that you all can learn from my mistakes or not mistakes, whatever you want to call them, uh, for whenever you do it next. So it's definitely worth having two people to cut. Uh, I know I said that I may be able to do some of it on my own later, and I did all of this stuff by myself on the table saw, all the smaller stuff, but I definitely needed my brother's help to get these big guys cut, uh, especially because I did not have a table saw with a guide that was longer than about two and a half feet. So if you have a really long guide and one of those huge table saws for like cutting down doors or big boards or stuff like that, then you'll probably be okay. But in my case, I just had a normal table saw and these turned out pretty well, but I definitely had to go really slow and have another person helping me so I could get them as straight as possible. And the ones I did warp a few in terms of not cutting them super straight. And for those ones, I just trimmed them down and created the shorter pieces out of them, which worked really well. Um, but all in all, it turned out really nicely and I'm hoping this all glue together fit fairly well. Of course, it'll be a ton of sanding afterward to make everything look nice. And this is definitely not one of the projects that you can expect to just do in like a day or two and get the whole thing up. Um, I spent like a day and a half cutting all of this stuff. It definitely took a while, but I think it'll be worth it. I think this will be honestly the coolest modernistic studio desk out there. So with that, let's start gluing. So for the gluing process, you're obviously gonna need a ton of wood glue so I just went ahead and bought a gallon and honestly I'll probably need to get more I'm just using the tight bond and it's the green stuff it's always worked super well for me um honestly it's probably stronger and more overkill than any of the glue that's used in the factory to actually glue the plywood uh layers together so it'll be plenty strong for what we need and then plenty of clamps uh I got four sort of medium sized ones and then down here right now, I just have two really, really long ones. Um, but I actually have a few more in the garage, and I'll bring those down here as well. But you'll want about five to six of the really long bars that will stretch to basically be able to clamp the entire desk when it's 30 inches uh, wide. And then a brush to apply the glue onto the plywood. That'll be really important to get a good even layer of glue. And then... This is just a scrap piece of MDF. It's good and flat and level. We'll want something like that so that we can line all the boards up and glue them together on a really level surface. Um, so I'm just laying that over. In this case, I have carpet down here. Um, but just laying that over that or if you have a really flat garage floor or something that's really level to be able to basically lay all the slats down and have a level surface. And then for the initial stages, I'm also gonna use a square just to make sure everything's really lined up before we get the glue, gluing process uh, running. So for the first few layers, we'll be using a square to line them up and make sure that everything is really, really good and square, obviously. So with that, I'm going to start lining all the boards up basically in like a crisscross pattern. Um, it'll be something like this little uh, five inch piece is going to go in between the eight inch piece. We're going to have um, one of the 1.5 inch pieces up here and then the 1 and 7 8 inch pieces down here and then again it'll be sandwiched in here so the whole thing when it's finished is basically going to look like one big piece it's going to look really clean and you'll see it's kind of hard to explain right now but just follow along here with the gluing process and I think it'll come together really nicely but of course the cutting took long enough 
but the gluing is probably going to take way longer than the cutting. Um, but it'll be peaceful and relaxing and fun to do. So just set up a nice clean workspace that you have to just lay everything out and glue. Make sure it's not too hot or too cold so the glue can set and dry really nicely and obviously uh, protect it from the elements so it's not going to rain or snow. And with that, let's start gluing. Alright, so you can see here that I pretty much just glued the 5 inch long piece, which is going to be the height of the inside of the shelf, to the 8 and 3 eighths inch piece. And I basically just lined it up by taking the 1 and a half inch piece and putting it at the top, knowing that the bottom will be just over 1 and a half inches to fit the bottom of the desk. So I'm just going to do this a bunch of times. Basically, it kind of preps these things to be nice and strong anchors to clamp to as I'm layering everything, and you'll see later on in the process. Alrighty, so after about 30 minutes, I unclamp these. They're not fully cured. It takes about 24 hours for the glue to fully cure, but they're enough to be strong enough to move on to the next step. So once we have these, I'm going to basically lay out all the boards, as you can see here in the video frame, with the basically 1 and 7 eighths inch on the bottom, and then 1.5 inch on the top. And then again, all the little strips here on the bottom of the second piece are 1 and 7 eighths, and then all the strips on the top are 1.5. So what I'm going to start by doing is taking this, uh, each one of these, and basically applying glue here, and applying glue here, flipping it upside down, and clamping it, basically clamping these two together to really squeeze in on this five inch piece to make sure everything's straight going down. I'm gonna glue all these in their right spacings, and these will glue in later, but for now, they're basically just gonna be a placeholder. So once I get one glued and clamped, I'm gonna put this in here and just rest it there so that it gives me the guide as to where to put this next one in here to glue and clamp that one. All right, so you can see here, I apply glue here, and here, here, and here. So now I'm just gonna rest that right in between these two boards on the end here. And when I have that all lined up, I'm just gonna take the clamp and go ahead and put it on. And then if you can see in the camera frame here, I'm just going to take the square on the other side, line it up, and that's how I can make sure that these are basically even with each other and one's not farther up or down than the other, and that everything is nice and square. So right now, it's looking really good. So again, now I'm just going to line up this board and this board here. and then repeat the process with glue on the next piece. Now that that's inserted in there, we're just gonna press it down, make sure that glue is sitting in there nicely. And then again, taking the clamp and putting it on. Periodically, I'm just checking to make sure that everything is looking good and square. Now, once everything is clamped, we can just go ahead and remove 
these center pieces just so that they don't dry in there and accidentally get stuck afterward if any glue ends up leaking out. So that's it for step two. Now we just let this dry for again about 30 minutes. All right, here we are 30 minutes later. Um, everything turned out really well. Nice and strong, nice and square, nice and flat. So now the next thing that I'm gonna do is basically like a two steps in one kind of thing. What I'm gonna do is apply glue. I'm just gonna work on this side for now and then I'll do this side later with the same process. So I'm just gonna apply glue here, here, and over there. And then I'm gonna take these sections that lay in between. I'm gonna put those in and then I'm gonna apply glue over the top of all of that. And I'm actually gonna take the next long piece and put it over and then put clamps going the whole way down, clamping these three pieces together. So that's the plan. I'm hoping that's gonna work well and basically repeat that on the other side after that clamps for 30 minutes. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now we're just gonna let that dry for 30 minutes and then we'll unclamp it and then do the same thing to the other side. All right, so now that that is all dry, which by the way turned out very nicely, very straight and just like we want it, we're gonna take four more of the five inch pieces now we're basically going to glue them right like so and then put one clamp on each one let that cure for 30 minutes and then we're going to do the same thing that we did over here to this side over here So for these guys, I'm applying glue on the bottom and on one of the sides. And that one side that I applied glue is going to butt up against this top board here. Alright, so the center pieces here are dry now. Now we move on to the last step in the sequence, which is basically repeating what we did on this side to this side. So I have all of our pieces set up that we're going to be gluing in between here. And then the big long piece, which in this case is now the 1 and 7 eighths inch piece, which is going to go over the top of all of them and basically clamp down on there.
All right, now we let this dry again for 30 minutes. All right, so here we have it. That's it after stage one. And now I'll basically just be doing a picture after each stage. We're basically repeating exactly all the steps I showed you over and over and over again to keep stacking this up. And I'll have obviously do explanations when we switch up or continue the desk out and everything. And of course, you'll just see that you'll just have to see the process because it's kind of hard to explain so far in advance. But everything looks really good. I see glue ooze out all through here. No gaps, no nothing. Turned out good and strong. And yeah, I think it'll really, really be a pretty build. It'll definitely require a lot of sanding. I'm just going to tack it with some 40 or 60 grit sandpaper uh, with a belt or orbital sander later on. Um, and again, using a better and bigger saw will definitely save you a lot of sanding, but I'm willing to put the work in. It's definitely quite a long build, quite a long process, but it's definitely worth it, really rewarding, and I think it'll be really beautiful. So with that, let's get stacking layers. All right, so after what has felt like absolutely forever, it's been quite a few solid days of glue, clamp, repeat over and over again. We finally built this up to the 10 inches that I was looking for. So this is the complete first stage. This layer is dry now so I can unclamp it. And then once it's all unclamped, we'll basically continue to build it up because these side boxes here and over here are gonna be coming out a little bit farther to fit the full depth of the audio boxes for the music producing in here. But this middle is not gonna keep coming out because I want as much desk space in the middle as I can. And this shelf up here may end up being cut out after the fact. It's very easy to just take a circular saw, zip down both edges here if I don't end up liking it. But the reason for this in the first place was to allow a nice even shelf all the way across to be able to fit two monitors, which is a very useful thing to have when recording and computer work in general. Another thing I wanted to mention is throughout the process, I think I mentioned this earlier, but just really making sure that you take a square. I've got a nice big one here. And again, I have this MDF sheet underneath, so it's a really flat board surface, it's level. And just taking a square, and lining it up with the whole thing all the way down every now and then, every couple of boards that I glue, just to make sure that I'm stacking it up perfectly straight. And when these two boxes are done, I'm gonna be tipping it on its side and just start building out so that it can be nice and flat. But for this purpose, it was just easier to do straight. And then of course, propping it up on two little boards there and over there, just to allow the clamps to have some room underneath it as it gets really, really heavy to pick up. So. We go ahead and unclamp this and start the next process. So we're starting the next step by painting glue on the longer side shelf pieces. And then hopefully this is in the camera angle, but we're just sticking them on like we otherwise would before. And we put two clamps on these guys. So one on each side. And then I'm just using my fingers. If you're really picky about it, you can just grab a cloth. And I don't even care because I'll be sanding everything to just smear the glue around just so it's not with these big drips everywhere. And that basically will get repeated on this one, and this one, and this one. And then we'll just continue to build it up like normal for about four inches, excluding the extra pieces that build this middle out from here to here. So everything will be like normal except for here. So let's continue to do that and I'll get back to you guys when that's all finished.
All right, so we're finally finished building it up to the desired height. You can see that that middle shelf there only comes out a certain length, and then each box on the side comes out slightly farther to fit the full depth of the amplifiers and or MIDI controller boxes and such. So basically now all that's left is to continue building the flat desk part out from here using all of these long straight wooden slabs here. So basically what I'm going to be doing is now rather than building it up and up and up and up because eventually it's just not going to be quite as straight. I could in theory do it up and up but it's going to be easier at this stage in the game. I've spent so much time meticulously making sure that everything here is nice and straight building up so far. But now I'm going to go ahead and tip it on its side and rest it across two slats of wood, one on each side, so that it's slightly elevated off the off of this uh, flat board so that when the glue drips and whatnot, it's not going to stick to the board. And then I'm just going to start clamping them out, basically bringing the clamps in from the top like this so that they have room. And then, yeah, basically just bringing it out and ensuring that it's really nice and straight. And I'm going to just clamp from one end all the way down to the other end. Uh, because I won't actually have any reference points or any of that, so I'm going to have to also make sure it's straight this way and not all uh, curvy from the imperfections in the table saw. So what I found is that these uh, long slats of wood, basically, obviously they can bend and flex this way, kind of like a bow. But if you turn them on their edge, they have a harder time flexing, but they'll still do it a little bit. So basically I'll clamp from one end, and then if I have to, slowly kind of bend these things into place to make them really, really straight from any curviness that happened on the cuts of the table saw, I can do so to fit the same really nice straight edge that I've had, uh, had going for me here. So let's get this thing flipped on its side and start building way out. And then, yeah, I'll just do a similar sort of a thing, pictures along the way, and then get back to you guys when all the gluing is finished. Alright, so here's the first layer glued, and again, each time I glue it, I just pick up each end and just make sure it's not sticking to these beams here. And as you can see, I kind of bent it in place to fit this nice straight line going across every single time. So we'll just keep doing that all the way out till the disc is done. Alright, so we finally have everything all glued to the desired width and everything is beautifully straight this uh everything i did worked worked out just as i was hoping so it was definitely a very slow process very slow process one step at a time but it was well worth it rather than trying to glue multiple layers at once so that everything turned out to be really really straight really flat and just really really tight there's no gaps i see glue oozing out between every single gap uh, that there was when I was clamping it and everything so I can be assured that no moisture is going to get trapped in it and nothing's going to be cracking later down the road. So now I just unclamped the last layer so rather than waiting 30 minutes before sanding and everything else I'm going to go ahead and at least wait a solid 24 hours for the glue to cure before we uh, put this thing up on sawhorses and sand it down and for that I'm just going to attack the crap out of the thing with a nice fat stack of 40 grit sandpaper for the orbital sander. I'm hoping hoping that this will work well because um yeah, I don't uh I don't have anything but an orbital sander and a hand planer. I might try a hand planer, but if you have one of those little electric spinny planer things that are handheld, that might be very useful compared to an orbital sander to attack the top here where it's uh, kind of uneven or whatever. Obviously, ideally, number one, you'd want to have a bigger table saw with a big uh, guide on it. Then you'll be able to eliminate a lot of sanding because you can already see here how the shorter pieces that I cut are much more accurate than the longer pieces in terms of being all bumpy lumpy and everything from uh, imperfections in the table saw. Um, 
So yeah, so if you do have a better table saw, bigger uh, fence and everything, definitely do that. Second of all, if you do have a either a belt sander or a bigger hand planer, belt sanders, the belts can wear out ridiculously fast and get really expensive to be replacing a lot. So I would recommend a big hand planer with uh, the electric ones. If you have one of those, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, and if you do have one of those, <laughs> use it <laughs> by all means. Um, but I'm just going to try my best luck with the orbital sander with some 40 grit sandpaper and hope that everything comes together. So in 24 hours, I'm going to prop this thing up and start a long few days of my hands feeling like they're going to vibrate off my wrists. All right, so with a lot of sanding, about three weeks, about one to two hours every single day, vibrating the crap out of my hands. I managed to get this thing looking really, really, really nice and smooth. So I'm very, very happy with that. I even uh, took a wood file and went inside here uh, underneath the little shelves here where I couldn't really fit the power sander. Took the wood file and then I did a bunch of hand sanding afterward. Rounded these corners, made everything even. As you can probably tell from when it was glued, it is quite different now really 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 looking good so it's about ready to actually put the finish on but before i put the finish on because i didn't decide to film myself sanding for three solid weeks um i'll just explain a few of the tricks i used um grabbing my power sander as well as uh some of the things i used to kind of mitigate vibration and everything like that so with that said let me show you what i did to wood file in here and the different uh, grits of sandpaper i used to get it looking really nice but it is possible with just an orbital sander DIY at home and I gotta say I am really looking forward to that thing being finished and in my room. So the sander I used was just a simple orbital black and decker sander with the 40 grit sandpaper until the entire thing was pretty flat and ground down and then for under the shelves I just used this really coarse wood file and to use the wood file as well as hand sanding I used a pair of just you know thin leather pigskin gloves but to actually use the orbital sander, I used this pair of Kinko's winter gloves. Uh, they do make work gloves with little pads on them to mitigate vibration, but I found that these things mitigate so much more vibration than the gloves that are actually made to mitigate vibration um, because they're just like a thick padded winter glove. So um, they're, they're really durable, thick leather. Um, I would definitely highly recommend uh, these for I mean these are these have been like my everyday winter gloves as well um, Not only to like work with but like to stack wood and everything I use these things all the time But that definitely helped with vibration with the sander and then I just took uh, once I was done with the sander I took 80 grit sandpaper and uh, Sanded in here underneath the shelves just going in kind of circular motions with my hand to get rid of all the file marks, the rough file marks. And you can see there's little bits and remnants of glue still. Um, I can't really get it perfect because it is done by hand, but I'm hoping when the finish is on there, it'll kind of even out all that color and still make things look really nice. But the top, I definitely got very, very, very flat. And uh, when I was done kind of going in circular motion with the 80 grit to, uh, you know, round my edges and just kind of blend things out, make sure everything was really, really nice and flat. I went ahead and went with, uh, or after the 40 grit, I went with 60 and then 80 and then 120 and then finished off with 220. Again, all just in kind of a circular motion because there really is no green on something like this because it alternates the layers of wood. So the circular motion, a light circular motion is really what's going to get it the most smooth to put the finish on. So with that said, I just took a little broom here, sweeped everything off. We're gonna take a slightly damp paper towel, make sure we get all the dust off, and then we can go ahead and finish it. And for that, I'll show you what finish I'm using in just a moment here. Um, and I'm gonna do the bottom surface first, and then I'll flip it over and do the top um, when the bottom's dry. So with that said, let me wipe this down, make sure I clean up all the sawdust on here, and we'll get the finishing process started. All right, so I just flipped the desk up on its side here, and we're gonna start with the bottom. And you can see here on the bottom, I definitely did not take as much time with the sanding. Uh, you can see quite a bit of glue looking pretty similar to how it did before we did any sanding on the top. Um, but I just took the sander, and this is still actually way better than it was originally, um, but it just takes forever 
forever to get everything even, especially without like some giant planer or things like that. And I didn't want to risk splitting the wood because it's all different grains and whatnot. Um, and because I didn't have a perfectly, you know, longs table saw, then all of these are uneven, but all in all, it turned out really nicely. Um, but the bottom, I'm not going to see anyway. So I just decided to sand it enough to get rid of any splinters or sharp edges that could potentially kind of crack or split or catch on something. Uh, so that's what I did with the bottom, but we're just going to do about two coats on the bottom and then maybe three to four coats on the top of just a clear Minwax polyurethane. So with that said, I have this entirely cleaned now, so there's no more sawdust. I can go ahead and get the polyurethane with a big brush and do the first couple coats on the bottom and then flip it over and do them on the top. All right, so this is the stuff I'm using in case you want to get the same stuff. It's just the Minwax polyurethane clear satin. So I just got, I think this is, yeah, 32 fluid ounces and that should do the trick for the desk. So you can go ahead and open that up and put some coats on the bottom, coats on the top, and then lightly sand in between each coat with a 220 or 300 grit um, just to make sure everything's nice and flat. And that should be a really nice finish. All right, so as you can see, we put the first coat on the bottom there and that very subtle gold color in the polyurethane really gets rid of a lot of those glue marks. So that's really starting to look clean. I really can't wait to see how it looks on the top but I think we will only need one more coat on the bottom and then we can go ahead and flip it over and do the top. And by the way, this stuff, you're supposed to wait around three to four hours between coats because I'm in a super hot, really dry climate. I can pretty much wait three between coats and then uh, go ahead and let it sit for like four or five hours before I actually flip it onto the sawhorses to do the top just so that I don't get anything uh, sticking to the sawhorses when I actually flip it over. So with that said, we'll let that dry, do a second coat, and then start doing the top. All right, so the top is finished now, looking absolutely beautiful after three coats of the polyurethane here. And with the top, I was a bit more careful to wipe the entire thing down with mineral spirits beforehand to give a nice clean surface for the first coat, as well as a light sanding after the first coat to make everything really smooth. So it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I'm sure you guys are waiting to see the entire finished product all set up. So three, two, one, fast forward. This is now my custom studio setup with my hand-built desk. Doing everything I wanted. It is everything I wanted and more. Absolutely beautiful. And I will do a studio tour if there is interest for that in the comments for sure um, to explain my entire setup. But for this video, this is about the desk and it fits everything I need. Um, my box is here, and I'm using a 27 inch monitor, by the way, sizing wise, in case you were wondering, and then just seven inch KRKs. And again, I even have more room for other things in this other box, but it's absolutely beautiful. It created quite a solid top here. Um, really, really nice. And then I'll also mention the legs that I'm using underneath are just these custom steel legs here. Uh, which kind of jet out in the middle there, freestanding, one on that side, the other side. And I'll get this whole cord mess cleaned up soon. I've just been kind of testing things out at the moment. But as you can see, the bottom is not quite as nicely done, but the top is so beautiful. Um, and I really am glad that I took my time in the finishing process. Absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, comment below if you'd like to see a full studio tour. All right, so that concludes this video. I know it was a bit of a long one, but thank you so much if you're still watching. And it was a super inspiring, super awesome project for me to build. Definitely a long, intensive labor of cutting, gluing, polyurethaning, sanding, lots of different steps, but well worth it. I'm very, very proud of how it turned out. And um, yeah, hope it inspired you to create something using the same method, whether it's like a little coffee table, a bench, a chair, or a more complex studio desk that's all integrated like this, but a very fun way to make furniture and very sleek and modern looking as well. So I do hope you enjoy the video. And if you do, obviously comment below if you'd like to see a studio tour and any other questions you might have as well. And don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.